Anais Mitchell is a talented singer-songwriter hailing all the way from Vermont. With two stellar albums, 1994's Hymn for the Exiled and 2007's The Brightness, Anais is in talent sure to look out for. I was able to sit down with the songstress before her Ann Arbor performance as she shared a little about her musical background, inspirations, and upcoming projects. My dad is a writer mm -hmm. and um, he was really into um, the whole like folk revival, like the Bob Dylan, Joni Mitchell, right, right. Um, Leonard Cohen, okay. Theron, those guys, right. and also like um, psychedelic rock, <laughs> dead, stuff like that. And, um, and he had a great record collection, mm -hmm. so I'd say that was my first introduction to music was that collection and, and, um, and the influence of my dad who, who really loved, um, he loved lyrics a lot. And, mm -hmm. The records were in the same, were in like the library with all of his books. And right. so I think I always had a feeling like um, that songwriting was kind of another wing of the, right. the literary tradition. Yeah, your lyrics do um, reference a lot of literary works as well as like political commentary. Um, where do you draw inspiration from for, in writing? Oh, um, well, like anywhere and everywhere, yeah. you know? Yeah. Usually I think the best songs. I get an idea that is just kind of drops out of the sky, you know, mm -hmm. and it's not like premeditated. I right. don't say I'm gonna write a song about, <laughs> you know, the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. Right. Or <laughs> um, but instead, a line will come, and it's usually both a melodic and a lyrical line at like, the same time. Yeah, and I'm sort of like, oh, where's that from? What is that about? Uh -huh. And then I sort of muddle through and see what comes of it. And a lot of my songs actually. Even like most of my political songs, mm -hmm. they start as love songs. Oh, really? I even have like some old lyrics to a lot of the political songs I've written mm -hmm. that are actually about a person. Really? And so I think usually like there's an emotional kernel to the song, right? And then the story kind of spins itself around that. Um, and by the time it's done, it's about something entirely different. I used to tell my boyfriend like, oh, "I'm writing a song about you," <laughs> and he'd be like, "Yeah, right," because um, it, was it into always would turn into something yeah. else. <laughs> Anais was also very excited to tell us about her latest endeavor, a folk opera called Hades Town. Orpheus is a great musician, and his wife gets bitten by a snake and dies, and goes to the underworld, and he goes after her and sings sad songs to try to win her back. Yeah. And, um, but this version of the story is set in um, kind of like a post-apocalyptic uh, American Depression era okay. company town <laughs> type of thing. So it definitely has a, a political undercurrent, mm -hmm. but of course it's a love story about this, this character Orpheus. Also, look out for Anais' newest release, a collaborative effort with her close friend. Well, musically, I do have another release that should be coming up soon, which is just like an EP that okay. I made with my friend Rachel Reese, okay. um, who's a really brilliant songwriter from Chicago area. All right. And we've known each other for years, and, um, and we've done some tours together and sing a lot of like girl harmonies, and, <laughs> um, and people you know, we're always like, you should make a recording together, and so we did, mm -hmm. and, um, and I'm excited about that too. It's just five songs, two of mine and two of hers, and then one of our friends, and we sing a lot on, uh, on each other's stuff, mm -hmm. and it's sort of country-influenced. After our brief look into the life and music of Anais Mitchell, she wowed the crowds at the Ark. We leave you with a sampling of her beautiful performance. Friday